Are you looking for a Smartsheet to-do list? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because today I want to present to you a couple of different options and give you some tips and tricks along the way. So as you can see here, I've got a brand new fresh account. I'm actually on a trial to protect my organization's data. But what I want to show you here and the same functionality should apply if you have an account. Um, but I want to show you some of the different templates that are available and free to use. And then we can walk through some of those, uh, how to maybe change those and make them kind of work best for you. So the first thing I would recommend you do is go to the Solution Center. So if you log into your Smartsheet account, then on the left hand side at the bottom, you should see a little plus icon and that is the Solution Center. And if we click this, now here you could kind of go through each of these. There's a lots of different templates and solutions that uh, you can kind of create or, or use, I should say, instead of creating from scratch and kind of edit them for, for your purposes. Um, and you could kind of browse them all. But if you want to kind of head straight to the one I recommend, then I would simply type in personal task list, press return on your keyboard. And this is the template that I would recommend you use. Um, I will be presenting to you a couple of options in a moment, but let's just quickly look at this one. So if I click on this here, then you get a brief overview of what this template's all about and what it kind of includes. If you click use, what it's going to do is it's going to create a copy of this template and it's gonna save it into your account and it's gonna put it into the sheets area. So that obviously this is closed just to myself at the moment. Nobody else can see this, which makes it very, very personal, of course. Uh, so if I open this up now, now we could change the name of it if we wanted to, you just click in here and you'd obviously put the text in, um, but this is obviously will, will suffice for now. And as you can see here, this is a very basic um, uh, sheet, but it does give you almost all of the fields you need. In this particular template, we have a done column. Uh, we have obviously a task name column, uh, a due date and a notes section, which are kind of good columns to have. So if you do want to build one from scratch, maybe do that. But what I like about this template is obviously you've got some pre-formatting in here. Uh, so if we take a look at this, we've obviously got some color coding where the high priority items are kept at the top. We've got the parent child relationship between the um, categorization and the actual item itself. Uh, and one thing I'd like to quickly just note here is the conditional formatting, which is in place on the sheet, which you can edit. Um, but I, I personally believe that this is quite useful and great kind of out the box. But if you click on the conditional formatting, you will see that if um, this particular column is checked, uh, then we want to apply the kind of strike through format to the entire row. But there's no reason why you couldn't have that instead of a strike through, you couldn't have that as kind of the cell goes green or something. All you would need to do is uh, either edit this rule and disable this rule. If you wanted it to apply as well, you would just need to add a new rule. So that's a, a quick tip if you're looking for a, a to-do list uh, in Smartsheet is that you kind of set up some formatting just to make it kind of easier to, to see, more visual, uh, and you get that kind of... Um, yeah, you get that kind of idea that you can kind of make it work for you if you like. Now, I my former video, the one I released literally a couple of days ago before this is about archiving. That's another option for you if you wanted to keep your task list kind of, if you've got a long set of tasks and you want to keep the sheet smaller, uh, you could actually create an archive of all the completed tasks. And you would simply, you could create a copy of this. Maybe check out that video, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but what you'd ba basically do is create a copy of this task list. And then once these are completed, you would set up an automation to get them removed into the archive sheet. So it could keep your task list kind of uh, succinct. Another thing you could also do is you could archive whenever the due date is in the past. That could be really, really useful. And then you'd essentially only be having tasks that are applicable to that day. And it would also enable you to kind of plan ahead. So do check out that archive video if that sounds of interest. Uh, otherwise, I do just want to quickly walk you through a couple of options. I am going to save that. But as I mentioned before, uh, there is other options in the Solution Center, and these may be better depending on your needs. So if you type this time, go to the Solution Center here, and then type in to-do list, I believe we get more options. Um, yes, we do. So as you can see here, there are, I think I've looked through these prior to the call, prior to the call, prior to the video. Uh, so one, 
two, three. I'd recommend these four basically. So this one here, uh, this one, uh, this one, and this one. The meeting follow-up maybe is, is useful, but perhaps not. And this is almost a template set, so that's probably overkill. So if I quickly just go through the same process and open them up, and I can show you what they all look like. So if I click this, again, we get that kind of overview of what this is all about. And if we click use, uh, then you can look into this one. This one is, I like it, but it is, and again, it's obviously saved it to our sheet section. I do like this, but it is quite, as you'll see, it's quite overwhelming and it's probably too much. Um, but what it does give us is it gives us some insight in, into perhaps what you want to include on your to-do list. So we've got a status key at the top, which kind of explains the symbols. Um, we've got just task description, due date, priority, if it relates to a particular project, who it's assigned to. So it might, might not just be yourself. This is where it's it's more of a team task list as opposed to a personal task list, but it is a way of having almost a to-do list in Smartsheet, and this is maybe useful if you're a manager. Um, and here you can see it's even broken down by the weeks. And if I expand this child here, um, you've got all of the different tasks pertaining to the different days what project it relates to and who's kind of responsible for it. And of course, you can just update this with your own data. So that's another option. If I head back uh, here, um, so it opens up in a new tab, which is useful. Um, but if I just go through some of the other options, the daily task manager is is great. It's maybe a little bit more, um, it provides a little bit more than the, the initial uh, template I showed you, um, which might be, more applicable for you, but it kind of works in the same way. Again, we've got a done column. We've got our tasks here. We've got those that are quick, those that are higher priority. We've got a status here, a due date. We've got basically an additional column here on resources. But yeah, it's also another another great option, personally like the first one, but this one may be, be good for you. So maybe you want to take note of this particular title. Uh, and then we'll get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. And let's just quickly look at the last two. So the task and progress monitor um, is, so while it just loads, again, it should be saving to my sheet section. But if I open this up, uh, here you can see there's an additional column of at risk, which you can put some flags on, which is kind of great if you've got kind of, um, yeah, you've got some tasks that you need to, 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 to make a note of that could you know, could cause an issue. But what I like about this particular one is that it's broken down by projects and phases. So again, this could be useful. Um, so, you know, maybe if you like the look of this, maybe take a note of it. But again, you've got conditional formatting set up, so it's another good option. And the last one I want to quickly cover before we finish is this one. And the reason why I'd like to draw this to your attention is this one's actually for personal items and you'll see the dummy data is actually set up for, you know, outside of work if you like. But what I like about it is it uses the card view. So if I go use, um, it's going to, and then open it up, then you'll see all, all of the tasks are kind of very uh, personal. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's a card view. So if you like kind of visual things, this might be better for you. We've got an on hold, a backlog today, this week, this month. Uh, there's even pictures in here. So yeah, maybe this is just, you know, this is a quick reminder. This is something you can set up. And if you like this card view, then this is the one for you. What I also like is that you can actually go to the grid view if you did want to see it set up as a grid um, or, or use it as a spreadsheet. And also what I like about this is as you can see it built as a grid, you could see essentially if you were to use one of the other templates and go into the card view, you'd see what it looks like, if that makes sense. So this can give you some inspiration if you did want to use a card view um, of exactly uh, the kind of data you want to include. So with all that said, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit the like button. That tells me I should continue making videos like this. And do consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you head over to my channel, I've got plenty of different videos on Smartsheet. I think I've got uh, probably over 85 now at the time of recording. Um, so if you're new to the platform, then I suggest checking them out uh, and you learn quite a lot about how it works uh, and, and also make the most out of it for you, you and your organization. I've got a couple of Smartsheet training courses. I'll drop links to those in the description below as well if you're interested on learning more about formulas or dashboards. And with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.